When you think of the 90s R&B sound, the one group that probably comes to your mind is the popular boy band High Five, the group that seemed destined to be prominent figures of the New Jack Swing era. Although they blessed us with five studio albums and continued to release music well into the 2000s, the group suffered multiple setbacks. The setbacks were teenage pregnancy, losses, arrest, and tragedies. So what exactly happened to the promising boy band? Well, we should start from the very beginning. The group started when singer and producer William, through his connection within the music industry, met Vinnie Bell. William had previously created a group called Adore that was signed with Jive Records. Vinnie, at the time of meeting William, was interested in developing a young act and William had the perfect person in mind, his fellow Waco native, Tony Thompson, whom he used to compete with in local talent shows. According to Thompson, Vinny flew down immediately to Waco, Texas, and immediately that was when the whole thing started. According to Vinny, Thompson had the it factor. They brought in other boys like fellow Waco native Russell Neal and Oklahoma native Toriano Easley, but Vinny still made Thompson the focal point of the group. William helped to compose the group's first demo so that they could land a record deal, but according to various sources, record labels were just not interested. So they decided to turn the group into a quintet by adding Marcus Sanders and Roderick Poole. According to a 2014 documentary, the group was originally called the Playmates, but after Hugh Hefner and the people from the Playboy Mansion threatened legal action, the group had to change to High Five, using the five in Roman numerals. But to avoid people confusing the name with the disease HIV, they had to remove the Roman numeral and they landed a deal with Jive Records. Marcus, in an interview, said they signed a typical record deal, but the big surprise was that the record deal was not in their favor. The group did not focus on the record deal because they felt that the money would probably just work itself out. Jive sent the boys to New York to work on their debut album with Teddy Riley, as their first single hit the number 66 spot on what was then known as the Black Billboard Singles Chart. The band was formed in 1989 and consisted of founding and original members, Tony, Pooh, Clark, and native Toriano Easley. While the group was celebrating their song making it to the top 100, Toriano was accused of murder. According to the LA Times in September 1990, Toriano shot his acquaintance, a 17-year-old Jim Galuli. The reason for shooting him came as a result of a heated argument that occurred between both of them. Toriano at that time was 16 years old and decided to plead guilty to a lesser charge, and that was manslaughter. In March 1991, he was sentenced to serve six and a half years behind bars, and he was no longer involved with the High Five, so he had to be replaced. In court records that were found, it was discovered that he got into trouble almost immediately after his release. In 1997, a warrant was issued for his arrest for leaving the scene of an accident that resulted in personal injury. And in subsequent years, Toriano faced more charges, including a traffic violation, a child support case, and intent to distribute a controlled substance. While Toriano was dealing with his problems, High Five continued working towards their dream. They released their self-titled debut album on September 25, 1990. The album reached number one on the Billboard chart. Toriano was eventually replaced with a Bronx native, Tristan Irby. Tristan was happy to be with the group, but he was not completely satisfied with the sound of their music. He told the LA Times that the album was too bubblegum and he was ready to help them change. Tony was by far the shining star of the group and he was hired to work with other artists as a solo act. His unique voice could be heard in Guy's 1990 song, Let's Chill. It should also be noted that at the time of the recording, Tony was just 14 years old. It was confirmed that in 1990, 15-year-old Tony impregnated 17-year-old LaBonda Cobb. They welcomed their son, Tevin, in August 1991. More events were still occurring amid the group because, in an interview with Unsung, High Five said, we feel our managers are too strict on us and that we want a little bit of freedom. Tristan told Chicago Now website in an interview that, we started rebelling while out on the road like we did not want to do homework and we also gave our tutor a hard time. 
and he also confirmed that they dabbled into substance abuse. Although it was not confirmed at which point in their career they started substance abuse, it was around the time when they decided to let go of their manager, Vinnie Bell. Tristan also added in the interview that he was the only one who wanted to keep Vinnie Bell. The group also felt they were not properly compensated by Jive Records. Russell was the most vocal among the boys who felt that the game and all the perks were not enough. When the group flew to New York to shoot the video for She's Playing Hard to Get, Russell failed to show up and the choreographer had to act like Russell in the video. Tragedy struck the group once more when they hit the road as a quartet in 1993 to promote their second album. While driving in Florida, their vehicle was hit from behind and Roderick Pooh Clark was paralyzed from the chest down. As Pooh was no longer able to perform, he reached out to Russell and asked him to rejoin the group as a favor to him, and Russell obliged. Sadly, Pooh passed away in April 2022 at the age of 49. High Five recorded one album with Jive to satisfy their three-album contractual agreement. But before the album was released, they signed a new record deal with Giant Records, and each of the boys got paid a signing bonus of about $60,000. But according to Unsung, the group decided that Russell would only get half the payment since he left the group for a while. But Russell did not fight it with them. He just decided to leave the group for good. Two more members were added to the group to replace Russell and Pooh. The two members were Shannon Gill and Terrence Murphy. The two new members were photographed for the cover of the group's third album, which was titled Faithful and was released in 1993. Because Jive was focused on its new artist, Robert Kelly, and they knew who High Five were, so they did not promote the album and it became a commercial flop. In March 1995, William, the man who brought the group together and was influential, passed away at the age of 27. But the cause of his death was not confirmed. When the group joined Giant Records, they realized that the record label just wanted Tony as a solo artist. The label agreed to release a High Five album after Tony's debut solo album. However, High Five never released an album and therefore the group disbanded for many years. Tony released his debut album, Sexational, and came to life with the help of several talented artists, writers, and producers. Despite the number of help he had, Tony struggled on his own and his substance abuse spiraled out of control. Without his High Five members to help him conceal his habit, he was dropped from Giant Records. He eventually signed with Bad Boy Records, but his substance abuse derailed that deal as well. But in 2005, he released a High Five album, The Return, which featured him, Terrence, and three new members. However, the other members filed an injunction that prohibited Tony from selling the album under the High Five name. In 2005, Tristan and Marcus reached out to Tony to put the original members of High Five back together, but unfortunately, that did not happen. On June 1st, 2007, 31-year-old Tony's body was found behind an apartment building in Waco. It was later determined that he passed away from inhaling a toxic amount of Freon. Almost three months later, Tony's 34-year-old sister also passed away. Just two years after Tony died, Tristan was shot five times outside a New Haven, Connecticut nightclub. According to the news report, Tristan was an innocent bystander when the shots rang out, but fortunately, he made a full recovery. In 2012, Tristan, Marcus, and Shannon reformed High Five with two new members and released new music, while Russell, on the other hand, found himself in the middle of a major tragedy. On July 1, 2014, Russell walked into the Houston police station and said he and his wife, Catherine Martinez, had gotten into a fight and that she had passed away in their apartment. The police found the wife's body and Russell was taken into custody, but was later released for a $100,000 bond. But he was later deemed unsound and was taken to a mental institution. And as of today, there's no update on the case. Through everything the group has been through, High Five is still going strong. They recorded some music, but the R&B landscape has changed, so instead they perform old songs to honor the previous members. What are your thoughts on the High Five group? Are you shocked about what happened to High Five? Let us know!
Thank you for watching. Until next time on True Celebrity Stories.